JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JOD Traders Espresso with me, that is Lunchowskas. Today is the 21st of January 2022. So yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Friday's morning session, or, uh, well, recorded session, of course, as you know, um, for this week only. Uh, but yeah, as always, guys, before we jump in into the charts, as always, uh, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So... The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so now then, um, also just before we jump in into the charts, as always, um, quick um, mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page, which is also updated on a daily basis. So yep, check us out here on jfdbank.com and yep, click on the research tab right there on the top. So now then, uh, jumping into the charts, guys, the first one I want to pick up here is Nikkei 225. So uh, the index uh, drifted uh, nicely to the downside initially, uh, then kind of it was a bit of a choppy one as you can see here, but then managed to rebound. However, still it was not enough for this index somehow to close in uh, or uh, to end in, um, in, in positive territory. So, uh, long story short, guys, for now, um, if we if we want to consider something else here, uh, well, um, basically, for now, for now, um, we can see that this hurdle, this 27,293, did provide good support uh, here. I mean, although we had a bit of a few violations here, a couple of violations here, and this this level is the um, the lowest point of October. Uh, but yep, uh, we still managed to kind of end above it, so end back above this area, back above this hurdle. Now, um, previously when I talked about this one yesterday, when I s uh, said that uh, due to the fact that we had a nice, uh, nice push back up here, maybe we could see that little um, higher retracement here. Uh, but uh, now probably uh, with the, the retracement could come here on the um, on the move and a possible move. Uh, if we jump back above this 27,594 zone right here, because as you can see, this uh, lowest point of uh, December uh, did provide strong resistance today. So if we pop back above that area, then uh, yes, we could uh, maybe consider a, a larger um, a larger correction here to the upside. So this arrow here might uh, work out. But let's not, of course, get our hopes up too much um, initially. Let's keep an eye on this one because if by any chance the market, European and the U.S. markets continue to decline today, uh, then yes, I mean, we, on Monday maybe we could see this one actually, uh, you know, dropping already below this 27,293 territory and then my next target will be this uh, the lowest point of August near the 26,955 territory. Um, so so far, I mean, everything's kind of working out according to the idea. And if you remember uh, in the beginning of this week, last week, I mean, and for a while, or for actually for the whole month, I keep, kept on talking that keep your eyes on this uh, trend, this triangle formation, because uh, once we get a uh, breakout through it, then we could consider the next short term directional move. And so far, everything's in line here. And uh, yep, we're seeing that down move. So uh, keep that in mind, guys, uh, for now, um, we might see those little uh, rebounds here, but for still the, the the short term trend is still to the downside here. Um, oh, jumping into before I jump in 
into the pairs, jumping into Shanghai Composite here. So there we go. We dropped below this upside line and we fell below the 200 day EMA. But what's more importantly is that we dropped below the, uh, well, now it's already the previous lowest point of January and, uh, yep, uh, which was that around 3,519 zone. And now, yep, uh, basically what's here uh what we can see here is that um we could see a further move uh lower uh we might see a further move lower here so um yeah be very careful um again this is what i talked about with you uh, a few weeks uh, kind of well recently and uh, last week as well so in general i mean the fact that we dropped below the 200 day EMA, yes, that, that was interesting, but then we quickly recovered. But what I said then that um, kind of the bulls should not get their hopes up uh, yet because um, basically mm, we we saw some hold up here near this 100 day EMA and then yeah, it provided strong resistance and that's the result we're getting right now. We're getting a nice good break of this upside line again and a drop below the 200 day EMA again. So showing us the black line here. Um, but as I said before, for that in order to go go for lower levels i need to see that strong move and and, and the kind of the cl a close below this uh 3519 zone and then yeah we could take it from there so for now um we can, we'll be very careful because again we should not exclude the possibility for example if this area holds we might see another rebound here and then we'll just confirm a nice little um, double bottom here, but again, I don't want to get these ideas in your head uh, for now because uh, mainly what I'm looking at, I'm leaning a little bit more towards the downside if uh, we do stay below this 3519 zone, and then we'll take it from there, guys. Uh, the the German index, DAX, um, yeah, looking at this, uh, looking at this beautiful move here, uh, I can see that uh, we had a nice push higher yesterday, it closed in positive territory, however, however, um, uh, if we take a look at the cash index, and let me just bear, bear with me one moment, let me just load up my system here, um, so we, up, um, Okay, so um, if we take a look at the cash index, we'll see that we had a bit of a decline, and and, and uh, yeah, we are currently sitting at around fifteen thousand seven hundred and fifteen zones, so um, below, bil still below the upper side here uh, of the uh, the falling veg pattern, which I'm kind of considering here to be. So, and this is what I talked about, guys, that um, until we get that clear break here through this upper side. Uh, we cannot really talk. About, well, we cannot really get comfortable with the idea, with the um, idea of this one maybe pushing higher, because according to all the tier rules, that's what how it's looking right now. I mean, it could push north. But, uh, as I said, mm, we need that confirmation break first. Um, however, mm, what I also said that if we continue to trade inside, we continue to tr respect the borders of this falling uh, veg pattern, then, well, it could still continue, let's say, drifting lower uh, within the pattern. Um, and then, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see what's going to happen, let's say, near these upside lines, these medium-term upside lines. But it's a bit of a uh, route here to, to make. So for now, I'm, um, I'm just gonna carefully watch the upper side of the falling uh, falling veg. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, I'm not saying I'm not saying that I'm bullish, not yet, and uh, I will not do anything until I get a clear breakout. If it continues to trade inside this pattern, well, I mean the pattern is to the downside, so that's where it could go, and at least in the near term. And going lower in the near term, so this is what's interesting. Nasdaq guys, Nasdaq, a very interesting trading session yesterday, guys. Initially, the the, the big at the beginning of the session we had beautiful um, beautiful moves to the upside I mean everything was nice exploding nicely higher um, and it seemed like we could get that recovery and to be honest we got that recovery and this is what I talked about yesterday that we might see a bit of a recovery here given that we saw uh, this uh, uh, this rebound but what I was saying also that be very cautious be very careful because basically the uh, the sentiment right now is not really on the 
positive side um, and due to uh, the markets kind of fearing uh, the upcoming kind of Fed's decision I mean and if I'm not mistaken now if after reviewing some information um, there could be some yes there is a, I think a, a uh, a policy meeting next week so that's where I think the, the fear is coming in so um, there are uh, there hope the market is hoping to see maybe if they can get some some sort of hints um, on the uh, on the increase of the interest rate but again let's not over speculate on this of course the market is speculating on that but um, we, let's be very careful and cautious on that front ourselves um, so far from the technical side everything's working out perfectly so we did drop below that 15,165 territory yesterday you can see we pushed higher initially but look how well this highlighted territory provided resistance this is what I talked about uh, previously guys and uh, then we basically found resistance here uh, and the bulls failed to push this one back up above this area and instead yep the the sellers took advantage of the higher price and boom that's what we got here we got a nice nice beautiful drop so um, Looking at what could happen now, basically the fact that we stayed below the 200-day EMA, that of course increases the chances for a possible further move south. Um, now, as you can see, I just marked this level here, the low of the uh, 12th of October, uh, near the 4, uh, 14,636 level. And uh, yeah, um, this could be a nice target. Um, I think the cash index, let me just bear with me one moment, guys. Um, yes, so the cash index did reach the area around the 14,616 level this morning. So we have reached this area basically, um, but then rebounded. And now we're currently sitting at around uh, 14,733 <clears throat> zones. So that's quite interesting. Um, so uh, let's see how this is going to play out. But again, it's not really looking well. Um, and if this slide continues today, then not only that I'm going to be looking at the low of the 12th of October, but I'm going to be looking at the the lowest point of October, nearly uh, 14,385 zone. And then we'll just have to take it from there, guys. I mean, uh, looking at this, this picture, it's not really looking a very uh, positive one. Um, certainly another thing to consider because it's um, because it's Friday and uh, the fact that we've broke the 208 EMA on the Thursday. And so this is where the interesting day could come in. Um, let's see if the trading activity will manage to bring the index back above the 200 day EMA. If by any chance the positivity kicks in at the last minute, um, and or should say by the end of the trading session, the US trading session, then that's going to be quite interesting to see if we can actually drift back and stay above this 200 day EMA. Now, I do understand that uh, it could be an interesting one because um, the, the current trend is still to the downside, but as we know, uh, markets do try to. Uh, do like Fridays um, and we do get these crazy moves on Fridays guys so uh, so yeah uh, before the weekend and yeah so keep, keep that in mind of course uh, like I said for now let's put it this way if to, sh if to sum up everything the main tr uh, the main uh, kind of uh, target right now is uh, the downside and um, these are the two levels that I'm aiming for uh, the low the 12th of October and the low lowest point of October um, but again, I will, depending on how today's trading is going to go, um, if there will be any signs that this uh, index wants to recover, then I'll be very carefully monitoring that uh, the 200 day EMA on my chart here. It's roughly around that uh, 14,967 area, approximately around there. So yeah, keep that in mind. Um, DXY, the dollar index, very quickly on this. So yeah. Um, um, we're still hanging above this uh, this hurdle, this highlighted territory, as the one that I spoke about previously. So that's a um, a good sign here for the bulls. So, however, the only problem for the bulls is this downside line. Well, maybe not the only problem, but one of the problems is <laughs> the uh, downside line. And if that gets broken, then certainly yes, the more of them could join in and push the um, the index uh, higher. But um, if 
if um, if it doesn't, um, then we will stay a little bit on the neutral side because for me, even to consider the downside here, I need to see a break of this upside line taken from the low of the 25th of May, and then yeah, we will take it from there. So um, so long story short, uh, as long as it stays in between these two lines, these two trend lines, I will remain a little bit on the neutral side. Now jumping into gold. <coughs> Uh, jumping into gold, so good push yesterday, higher, uh, closer to this 1849 zone, um, didn't really hit the territory, but um, uh, we kind of came very close to it, and then we declined a little, uh, so now we're just kind of stalling here, it's going to be quite interesting to see what's going to happen further, because at the moment I'm still aiming for the upside, as long as it stays above this area, the one that I talked about previously, this 1829, 1831 levels, between those levels, um, so this whole area for me is the one to watch for now, um, if... Um, if uh, we do, like I said, we do stay above this, then I will uh, get, let's say, a little bit, still I will remain comfortable with uh, kind of aiming for some higher levels. But if we eventually drop below this and stay below this area, now that's where uh, maybe uh, the pessimism could come in, in in the near term only maybe, um, but still we would need to maybe keep an eye on this, this upside support line here taken from the low of the 10th of January. So there's a lot of kind of things to consider um, and maybe not ideal, I do understand that, but hey, we need to protect ourselves and we need to consider all the possible scenarios, or at least to consider all the possible possible scenarios. Um, WTI oil, beautiful, beautiful, I mean, uh, looking at this yesterday, if you remember, talk, I talked about this, and I said, be very careful be ca here, because we kind of uh, formed a potential, uh, on Wednesday, we might have formed a potential shooting star here, and um, a possible reversal signal, so yeah, um, it, and yesterday when we pushed higher you can see it had an attempt to move north here but failed to reach the high the current highest point of january which by the way let me quickly mark here um let me just grab a new line um so oh actually there is one 787.90 um okay so in that case let's uh let's put this line somewhere um actually somewhere higher um somewhere higher i do have it already uh, anyway let's put it here um for now um so yeah um the fact that we yeah tried to uh, had an attempt to move higher to create maybe a higher high with that failed um instead the uh, the instrument here the commodity uh, formed a higher uh, sorry a lower high um and then it drifted lower it went back to this upside line and boom today we're having a nice breakout it's kind of like an automatic breakout here uh, we open uh, well today's candle kind of opened here uh, outside of this uh, or below this upside line now um, I will mention this again but um, this of course gives us an indication that maybe just maybe we could see this one drifting lower back down um, and if you remember in the beginning of this week I talked about uh, this uh, this commodity and I said keep your eyes on the weekly chart guys as well because if this is gonna hold nicely here then well I mean we could see um, maybe a possible range forming again that's uh, something to keep in mind um, and coming back to the daily chart so yeah um, let's looking at this right now seems like there is a potential for this one to move lower however I uh, will stick to my guns and I will remain uh, negative if we drop again below this hurdle below this downside line uh, and below this uh, 83.07 territory right here so in other words, this territory right here is somewhat of a kind of neutral one for me because I'm going to be observing it carefully because what could happen here is we could, we could see a drift lower, but um, let's say if it rebounds from this territory and then pushes back up, so I mean, then yeah, ignore the whole the whole thing here. And, um, and another thing that I mentioned as well, we might see maybe this one as a, as a somewhat of a rising channel, but again, I do I guess there's too many lines already on the chart, so let's not maybe overcomplicate things. For now, I would say keep your eyes on the upper side of these, this range, uh, which got violated, of course. But um, if we like look at the weekly chart, then we'll see a much, much, much prettier 
picture. Uh, so yeah, and for the downside, as I said, uh, wait for at least a drop back below this downside line. Uh, now jumping into Bitcoin very quickly, I'm not going to spend too much time on this one, but boom, there we go. Beautiful attempt yesterday to break this downside line. However, once again, it just confirmed that this downside line is no longer a tentative. It is a, a normal uh, downside resistance line taken from the high of the 10th of November of last year. Um, so we have our three touches. Mm, and most importantly, that we have dropped below this hurdle, this 40 41,634 and talked about this and I said that my next target will be the lowest point the current low well the previous lowest point of January near the 39,673 uh, we managed to reach that and we managed to break that as well today um, so let's see if we can drift further south on this one uh, my next level here that I'm going to be aiming for uh, will be this one right here let me just put this one on chart the low of the lowest point of August of 2021 um, and that's roughly around the 37,318 territory and then yeah we will take it from there uh, for now for now um, if if it continues to trade of course below this area below the previous lowest point of uh, of, of January then yes my next target will be uh, the lowest point of August near the 37,318 zone um, now jumping into a, a few pairs AUD USD so this is something that I warned you about yesterday and uh, when I looked at uh, a lot of well, three um, Australian dollar pairs and uh, yeah so uh, yesterday if you remember in my video um, I Especially, I talked a lot, a lot about my favorite AUD and AUD NZD. Um, but um, yeah, that one's I mean, very. No, that was very positive. I mean, you have had a fantastic explosion to the upside. Um, but what I was saying about AUD USD and AUD CAD, be very careful because um, here uh, this might happen. So yesterday we were uh, drifting uh, initially above this 0 0.7229 zone, but um, uh, or let's round it up to 30 0 0.72. 30 zone we drifted uh, initially above that but failed to stay above that and today we're seeing a bit of a decline here and this is what I talked this uh, said that if we do dec decline then keep your eyes on the subside line which if provides support might uh, then we might see a nice rebound and a push back to the upside um, now in terms of the um, in terms of the upside here, I would probably just make it a little bit more simple here and wait for a push above that uh, 0 0.7230 zone again. If and if if we get that move, then yes, I'll aim for the upside. For now, the fact that we're uh, trading near this uh, near this upside line that kind of scares me a little bit. So yeah, um, so yep. Yeah, uh, for now, um, looking at this, I mean, yeah, I mean, it is increasing the chance for a possible breakout here of course the more it comes closer to this to this line the more I mean chances it, it is for it to break it so yeah uh, let's keep an eye on it and of course if we do break this line and then we fall below the current lowest point of this week near the 0 0.7170 then yep I'll aim for the downside uh, similar story with AD CAD so we had a nice push but yesterday I said uh, keep your eyes on the steep downside line uh, which we initially broke but um, yeah we can see that it continues to hold so uh, the downside scenario is back on the table um, well it was never off the table but um, yesterday after kind of a good move higher maybe we thought uh, we could see a bit of a move uh, a larger uh, correction here to the upside however this downside line did continue to provide resistance and uh, there we go boom so we have uh, dropped below this zero well actually we're we dropped below this downside line again um, and we're approaching this 0 0.8972 territory so yeah let's keep an eye on it that's the lowest point of December we need a clear break below that area in order to go for some lower levels now similar story with usd cad but um similar in a way but not very so uh, <laughs> what i kept on saying to you guys this whole week keep your eyes on this hurdle somehow it is providing good support so this 1.2493 is doing its job and providing good support and uh, yep now we're seeing a nice little rebound here and uh, yep, uh, for now, uh, let's put it this way. Um, if you're looking for the downside, then wait for that, at least the body of the daily candle to remain below this hurdle, because you can see we have 
keep getting these false breakouts, but yeah, it's not really helping uh, the majority of the sellers. Now we're seeing a nice rebound, and, uh, and the, this is what I said to you yesterday that the fact that we got a bit of a uh, an area here to fill up, maybe we could see a, a nice, a nice good uh, re reversal here back to the upside, and especially keep your eyes, of, of course, on the oil. On oil, um, if that starts declining, then well, it's a perfect move here for USD CAD to go uh, to to go for a bit of a, a larger correction to the upside. Uh, USD JPY very quickly on this, so um, we can see that we are getting a nice drift lower here. Uh, we are still trading below this downside line, so that's why I kept uh, this one for now. Um, we are approaching this uh, low, the the current lowest point of January near the 113.48 zone, and and uh, if we manage to reach that and then drop below it, of course, then yes, this could open the door towards further declines, especially towards the 112.73 territory right here, which uh, pre recently provided good uh, good support. But if that gets cleared, then we have this upside line to, 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 to think about. Uh, but for now, guys, and of course, a lot will depend on the equity world. Um, if that uh, continues to decline, then well, further declines, yes, on USD JPY could be possible due to increased yen buying. Uh, GBP JPY um, here, uh, we have a situation um, which is quite interesting because we're currently sitting near this, uh, the high of the 17th of November. Um, it's acting as a kind of a somewhat of a support zone for now. Um, now, if you're looking for, uh, if you're looking for some upside, then certainly you will have to just keep an eye on this and wait for a possible rebound from this territory. However, um, still, I mean, maybe this obstacle is just a temporary pit stop on the way lower because we, uh, we could be seeing a lar a part of a kind of a larger correction to, to the downside. And the fact that, of course, if the, like I said as well, that if yen buying uh, increases due to markets, uh, equity markets falling further south, uh, then yes, uh, we could see this pair also drifting nicely to the downside. Now, my, one of my favorite as well, becoming one of my favorite, Euro NZD. So this week, in the beginning of this week, I talked about this idea, possible idea of, uh, of seeing this one, maybe a nice good pop here above this area. Well, I mean, look at this. I mean, we're having another another attempt to do so. And uh, well, let's uh, let's see if it can go forward with this idea. Uh, for now, I mean, everything's yeah looking quite interesting here. Um, so for now, I'm still I'm. St still stick I'm gonna stick to the um, uh, idea that I've mentioned before so uh, yep we could see that nice good pop here and uh, and then my next target is the highest point of uh, September of last year near the 1.6914 zone and finally your USD so here, um, not much excitement. The only the only excitement is the fact that uh, it got closer to the upside line, um, which, yes, of course, it makes everybody it makes the bulls worry uh, because again we're we're having another t test of this upside line. So um, this could lead to maybe you know a, a, a fall and later on. So and the fact that also we are below this downside line, then that's not really giving any any much reassurance for the bulls. So that's why. Although, yes, we're seeing a bit of a retracement here. However, that could be just uh, part of a normal little corrective move higher before another possible leg of selling. Either way, uh, we still need to see a break of this upside line before, let's say, uh, aiming for some lower levels. And for the upside, I would need to see this one pushing back above the 1.1383 territory, preferably, in order to get uh, excited maybe with the upside scenario. So guys, that's it for this um, session, and uh, yeah, that's it for this week. So once again, apologies for the beginning uh, for the beginning of the week. I mean, we had some issues with the video with the live stream, so unfortunately, wasn't able to run that. Um, so kind of reverted back to recordings. Uh, next week, hopefully, uh, everything goes well, and uh, should should be um, I should start the videos live. So yep, um, keep that. Uh, well, if, if you want to join me, like I said, as always, at my Traders Espresso, 
uh, nine o'clock, uh, sorry, nine o'clock, seven o'clock GMT time, uh, <laughs> seven o'clock GMT time, guys. Thank you very much for watching and listening. Thank you very much for all your likes, for your views, your comments, guys, this week. So really, uh, that really means a lot to me. So thank you very much for that. And I really appreciate that. And I'm really happy that, well, you find these videos useful. So, uh, so yeah, thank you for that. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you next week. Have a lovely weekend, everyone. And, uh, Bye-bye.